All right, so we're here with Charles L. Hughes, and you're out of, let's see, you're out of um, Memphis, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, a couple of years ago, I was in uh, Memphis, so, uh, you know, I'm only about two weeks there, but it was, it was good, it was good to see, good to be there. So, you know, tell us about your work first because you're, you know, a chair of um, the center. So tell, tell us about that center, you know, tell us how, how you do, you know, get into that work, yeah. Yeah, um, well, thank you so much for having me. I mean, first of all, it's just such an honor to speak with you and and to be a, to be a part of your world is really, um, really meaningful for me. So thank you. Um, so I, uh, I'm originally, I'm not originally from Memphis, I'm originally from Wisconsin, but I, when I was in graduate school, I started doing work as a historian, thinking about Memphis and thinking about the Memphis region um, and, and music and race and American history and things like that. So I ended up being able to come to Rhodes College here in Memphis, uh, working with this Memphis Center, which is designed to kind of connect the college to the city of Memphis through our academic program. So classes and fellowships and projects and events and those kinds of things. And it's really fantastic work because I get to, you know, link the, the sort of more kind of traditional things of college life, you know, with, with being able to connect with our incredible, vibrant community. Um, you know, Memphis is really an amazing place with so many such an amazing legacy of, 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 of genius of various kinds. And that's true to this day. So, so that's kind of what I do with that. And of course, I also teach it at Rhodes. Um, and, you know, I, I write about mainly about music and, and race and other things and history. So it keeps me busy. Yeah, yeah. I saw the video of um, you were talking about, you know, race and music. Um, it was and soul music and blues. It, it was really, really um, interesting, you know, um, for myself because I have been always into, you know, race, disability music, you know, going back yeah. to the blues, you know, all the way up to today. So, yeah, your work is very interesting to me, very interesting, you know. And you, you put out this book about Bushwick Bill. And it's, yeah. I can't wait to get into it because I've always, um, you know, studied, you know, Bushwick Bill and, you know, with Crip Hop Nation. Um, we we try to get Bushwick Bill to join Crip Hop Nation. Mm. It just didn't work. But, um, you know, his, his legacy and his... Um, contributions to hip hop and being, you know, I think one of the first um, outspoken, popular disabled hip hop artists, you know, to do that is just amazing. So yeah, I can't wait to get into your book, you know, and his music videos, you know, we can start there about his music videos. And yeah, his music videos touched on display, you know, um, you know, um, like you said in the book, um, sizing shit, you know, that 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 video and you know the the the, the popular video where um Killer Boys um when he was in the hospital and comes out with a stretcher and all that. Yeah. So yeah, so you know, tell us, you know. You know, tell us about this book. Tell us why Bushwick Bill and, um, you know, yeah, why, why did you do, do this book? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you know, I, I th there were there were a couple reasons, you know, and one of them really was very kind of personally connected to my own life. You know, I'm also, you know, short statured yeah. and I, I, we share those physical that physical marker and you know Bushwick Bill's work was always as soon as I heard it and for a long time now you know he's just been really um you know the way he talks about being short in the world is so powerful and particularly in the ways that he does it 
that people aren't expecting, right? Or that don't align with the way folks imagine that short people are gonna behave, you know, sizing shit being kind of the perfect example of that. And I've, I took so much kind of, you know, I, I'm very, I'm very hesitant to use the word inspiration because of all that goes with that. But, you know, I, I took a lot of that and, 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 and got a lot of, I think, really important, um, you know, lessons <laughs> about how to, how to be who I am. Um, at the same time, of course, I also, you know, um, there are ways that we were very different. And I want to talk about that too. You know, I had to talk about race, you know, and I didn't want to make it, I didn't want to make this another book about a, black musician that is written by a white person. So then it just becomes all about the white person being inspired, you know, cause that's, that's the, the world doesn't need any more of that. But, um, and then I also, beyond that, you know, just kind of thinking about just how important, you know, Bushwick Bill was for the reasons that you just said and, um, and, and thinking about him in the context of the history of disabled musicians and disability in music, not just in hip hop, but, but really popular music in general. And then also just the importance of the Ghetto Boys and the role that he played within that group is such a, such an important, not only hip hop group, but also, you know, they were at the center of controversy and, you know, political change in the late eighties and early nineties in ways that I really, I knew, but I didn't even recognize how central they were until I started doing the research. So I wanted to kind of think about disability and popular music through through the figure of this really crucial figure who's who has not i think you know generally in kind of the the big the big mainstream world gotten anywhere near the attention he deserves and i hope that i hope that there you know this isn't meant to be kind of a comprehensive autobiography um this i hope there's others and i hope there's a lot of celebrations of him so yeah i wrote it both for kind of personal reasons to try to talk about you know, talk about disability and talk about disability in music, um, but also just, you know, disabled experience, my own and others. Um, and then also to really celebrate and honor this crucial artist and this crucial moment. Yeah. yeah. I, want, I want to show the work. <laughs> I'm wondering, you know, the, the, the book is also small. So, you, right? Yeah. You follow yeah. That? Oh, uh, that um, direction, you know, making the book small, so it's like almost like Bush with Bill and yourself. Yeah, you know, I wish it, that this, it's actually part of a series and all of the books are kind of small, okay. but, but it was so appropriate, right? Yeah, like, yeah, I, totally, and, totally. You know, um, I kind of, I kind of love that and I love that, you know, I, yeah, it's just, it, it just it was so perfect and and, and yeah. it worked out that way but yeah no that was that was kind of a lucky coincidence but still a good one <laughs> yeah yeah a good one you know i agree in the back and, you know i i think it's one of the first ever because you know i, I collect books around disability music and so say hip-hop and the blues and your book i think it's the first ever that 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 is in the hip hop arena talking about disability and placing a disabled artist in disability studies and the disability conversation. I've been looking for this type of book for years. You know? Oh, wow. And it's, it, it, it's to tell you, dude, it's not out there. You know, you, you got um, MF Brin that did um you know comic book and I'm happy about that he got you know party party that did his book that had sick of cell but nothing compares to um to your book and how you you really connected to disability you know uh, those those books don't really connect you to you know disability disability culture disability arts because I think um, most hip hop artists don't have the disability politics. Mm. You know, they, they really can't write from it, you know. So, you know, tell us, you know, the, you know, what this, this book is, you know, what, what is the audience? Do you think that disability studies, 
You know, I get I can see this going in this way. I I'm telling you, it's like the first or the first one of its kind. I, I showed it to my advisor, and my advisor is um, a hip hop scholar and professor. And he's like, Levi, where, where did you find this? You know, yeah. like there's just nothing out there. You know, so you know, tell us, you know. Who was your audience and what, 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 you know, what was the vision of this book? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that's, that's, that's really fantastic that you were, uh, yeah, that, that you founded that. That's great. I, I hope that that happens in other respects. I mean, I would, I definitely am trying to talk to folks in disability studies and in the kind of disability justice world as well. Um, and to think about the ways that, you know, and, and again, I mean, to, to kind of honor your work and I talk a little bit, not anywhere near long enough, but I talk a bit about Crip Hop Nation and about you at the end of the book, because, you know, and as I say this, I say like, this is, you know, the intervention that you and you all have made is so important. So I kind of wanted to offer my, you know, my, 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 at my response or my, my verse to that cipher that you and others have created. <laughs> Um, I certainly want to talk to popular music folks. You know, my roots are really in pop music history and studies. Yeah. And there, that's an area where disability is just starting to be yeah. talked about. Um, and so I, I wanted to, to definitely talk about that and kind of, you know, have this open a door, hopefully, as a, as a book that I think is, you know, I'm really proud of, but also will lead to other work. Um, and, you know, I wanted to, to, to talk to, to talk to hip hop fans and talk to hip hop scholars and hip hop writers and hip hop folks just about how important I think thinking about Bushwick Bill is both because of the, the fact that he is so prominent and so eloquent in his discussions of disability on his records and elsewhere, um, but also just broadly to kind of talk about how great he was, <laughs> you know, overall and, and how great the Ghetto Boys are because I feel that still um, you know, the Ghetto Boys are a group that I think is definitely, they're getting more of the attention that they deserve for how pivotal they were. But um, part of it was also just like trying to talk about what I think is really this crucial career that they had. So yeah, I, I mean, I definitely hope the book reaches folks, um, not only disability scholarship, but just in, you know, disability justice and, and you know, the disabled, the disabled world, uh, but also, um, but, but definitely music folks and, and hip hop fans for sure too. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a breath of fresh air, you know, like I said, it's, it's, I've been waiting for a book like this for decades, so thank you. You know, it, 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 it's kind of strange too, because now, um, one, another member of the Ghetto Boys is going through his disability. Right. You know, with COVID and, you know, getting a, a transplant and all that stuff. So it's kind of interesting that, you know, he's, he's going through that, you know, right now. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, yeah, that's such a good point. I thought about that. Um, I don't talk about that in the book in part because that was just kind of happening right as I yeah. turned it in, you know. Um, but I did think about that a lot with Scarface and how yeah. that is, I, you know, I wonder if and how that's going to, you know, come out in his work going forward, whatever, of whatever kind. So yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, very interesting, very interesting. You know, how, how long did, you, did it take to, to write the book? Um, you know, I, I haven't started it yet, but, you know, what, what what was your research process? Yeah. You know, yeah, things like that. Sure. Um, so I mean, it was a it was a book that I had really um, I it it came out of a conference paper that I gave a oh, very okay. classic, classically kind of academic uh, way to to start a project and. Um, and it actually, the, the, the paper that I gave at, a, at the pop conference, which is this pop music conference that is really fantastic, um, was basically, it was called, the paper was called Sizing Shit, and it was basically kind of a boil down version of, the, of what became this. 
And, uh, and, you know, I don't know, like, I don't know your process or, 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 or other folks who might be listening, but my process for research is I always tend to over-research for things like oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You get this 15 minute conference talk and I did all this yeah. research. Yeah. At the time, I didn't know that I was going to write a book about him and about, you know, and putting him in these, these larger histories. Mm. Um, but then um, after he died and, and, and I thought about it and I thought, you know, I may, I may actually have something to say for this, this series out of, out of Texas Press, the, the Music Matters series. Mm. And so um, it, it took, and then when I really kind of began it in earnest, it took about took about a year, I would say. Um, a lot of the research, like I said, had been done. I didn't want to, you know, one of the things that is sort of a, certainly a limitation of the book, but it's also not really what I was aiming to do. You know, this isn't, as I said, this isn't meant to be kind of a full autobiography. I mean, you'll learn a lot about his life, um, but but I, you know, so I, I wasn't going to do the kind of autobiography sort of research stuff, although I did a lot to find out things. Um, but just kind of digging into his life and the Ghetto Boys work and all of the, a lot of the things about kind of how they were talked about at the time. I did a lot of research into, you know, that moment from about 89 till about 94, where they are really in the center of these controversies and the center of kind of, you know, these debates over hip hop and, and anxieties over blackness and all of these things. And, you know, the, the censorship battles and all these things. Um, and it was really interesting to do that in part because, you know, I learned a lot about how people were talking about him and them, um, including talking about him in very ableist ways, which is not surprising, but is also yeah. really bizarre to see just how explicitly even sort of quote, you know, objective reporters would use ableist terminology. But then the other side of it was, uh, was getting to hear how much he in particular spoke back and how how much he talked about what they did and what he did. Um, so anyway, yeah, I did a lot of that kind of research and then also digging back into work on disability and music and, and um, other, you know, histories, but also contemporary examples of, you know, kind of placing him in that larger historical context and, you know, taking it all the way back, well, even further, but, you know, really starting, you know, placing him in the legacies of the freak shows and thinking about, how, you know, all that works. So, so it was a really, you know, it was really, uh, uh, it was the kind of research process that, you know, it's work because these are always work, but, but mm. it was so rewarding for me to kind of find these stories. And then also, as I said, to kind of, you know, really begin in ways that I had not even before to kind of, so many things really resonated in a sense with sort of how I've experienced the world um, or, or helped me kind of think about that. And again, even though I was very, Kind of careful not to just make it seem like you know like there are no differences between me and Richard Shaw, which is Bushwick Bill's given name. Um, um, it was just it was a really, you know, as I think so many disabled writers and artists and activists talk about, you know, that telling telling our stories is a radical process, and so yeah. I I wanted to honor that as well within this and. Um, I'm rambling a bit now, but yeah, so it was, it was, it was a really great research and it felt just like a project that I was just, the moment I really started, I was just locked into it. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. did you, because like I said, I haven't read it yet, but you, you said that you mentioned um, his solo career. Yeah. I'm wondering, you know, when he left the ghetto boys, you know, was it hard for him to get a record? Neil, because of his disability, or because he was part of the Girl Boys, you know, it was easier, you know. That's a really good question. And, um, and, and also, he, he, went, he went to gospel hip hop yeah. after, after the Girl yeah. Boys. That, that is kind of interesting. Yeah, it really is. Um, in terms of the record deal, I didn't find any evidence that he. That he had trouble, although I think um, that that may have happened. He, you know, he kind of his first solo work comes out when he's right right after the the peak of the Ghetto Boys. So I think they were actually, you know, that th there was a sort of commercial opportunity for him, and and he had some success. You know, I talk in the book quite a bit about the song and album Little Big Man, which I think is yeah. just so fascinating. 
Uh, and then also the one after that, the Phantom of the Rapper. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, right? It's so interesting. Yeah. One of the real goals of the book, which I hadn't planned on it at the beginning, but one that I really understood very early on was one of the goals of this book is I hope that people who haven't listened to his solo albums will go listen to them now because I think they're so good. I mean, there's some of them near the end aren't as good, but they're even those have great moments. And yeah. um, so I didn't find any evidence of that, but I but I did find a lot of sort of the way in which he had to kind of negotiate between, you know, his shortness was was part of what made him unique and marketable, right? And and also the, you know, the his struggles with mental health and losing yeah. the eye and you know yeah. those things. So on the one hand, he had to kind of leverage those things because that was part of who he was and what he was talking about, while also doing, you know, trying not to just be this kind of freakish, you know, novelty figure. Um, and the gospel album, I love. I think the gospel album is just such an interesting, yeah. like, it's, it's, I talk in the book about how he kind of develops over his career pretty early on in the Ghetto Boys and then throughout these sort of, you know, the, these few kind of central strains of his work. There's like the size ain't shit kind of thread. There's the, there's the mind of a lunatic thread, which he really complicates and makes much more multifaceted thinking about mental illness and thinking about struggling with demons. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the kind of the, the, the Chucky side, oh, which, Chucky, yeah. you know, and uh, which of course, you know, with shortness is just such an interesting story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the gospel album I bring up because he, he, he's like on that album, he's, he's like riffing on and commenting on all of that. He actually very directly in that album is like, talking about Chucky, talking about, you know, the way, the ways he's talked about shortness before. And yeah. I just think he's such a, he's such a sophisticated thinker in the way that he, I mean, obviously he was a sophisticated thinker. He was apparently a brilliant, brilliant yeah. man. And it's pretty evident uh, in a lot of the, the things that he said and talked about and did, but even beyond that, like sometimes that brilliance you know, it doesn't mean that that's going to come out on your records, but I think it did with him. I think he really was conscious of how he was doing this. And it's one of the reasons why, again, if you haven't listened to the Kitchen Bushwick Bill solo albums, they are, they are just really, really interesting and, and really, really powerful. So, so yeah, I, I think he was always throughout his career, he was, he was trying to, you know, just kind of be honest with the fact that his, his physicality made him unique and distinctive and may therefore maybe could help him professionally mm -hmm. while also trying not to just be kind of pigeonholed into being thought of as this novelty freakish yeah. kind of, you know, that, um, and he, he also, he even, he even talked about that. And, you know, there are records where he talks about, you know, how he was constantly questioning Mm -hmm. pre pre fame and then after mm -hmm. constantly questioning like do people like me because they like me or do people like me because they think it's interesting to like me as a short guy mm -hmm. which as a short guy i can tell you i not a star not i didn't have that experience of that he did but there are ways in which that's a, that's a very recognizable experience and i i know it is for a lot of disabled folks and mm -hmm. and i'm just so struck by how much he talked about that too yeah, it, it's interesting um, for me that I never saw him, you know, with his family, you know, outside of the music, outside, you know, you never, you never saw him, you know, with his family or with his, you know, other, you know, doing other things than, than just music. And it's just, it's just, yeah. It is just interesting that you know that you can go through YouTube and you don't you don't see his family. Right. That is interesting. Uh -huh. um, wow, yeah, I hadn't I hadn't thought of it quite that way. You're right. No. Um, yeah. Um yeah. Yeah. So you know, coming, you know, coming out of this, you know. What's, what, what's your next project? You know, are, are you going to, you know, stick on um, disability music stuff or are you going to 
go somewhere else? Yeah, I, um, well, so the next book that I'm working on is a little bit different in its, it's about professional wrestling. <laughs> I'm writing a book about yeah. professional wrestling. Yeah, and uh, kind of a history of, um, it's interesting. yeah, and you know, it's funny because like, it's one of those things where in some ways it is very different from the music work I've done, but in other ways, I notice a lot of similarities, you know, it's talking about bodies and identity and yeah. labor and, you know, narratives and, you know, um, but I will say that I, I'm certainly going to write more about music. And I think that I, I think that I will be working more on disability stuff. I, you know, I've had in the past couple of years, um, both through this project and through some other things, you know, just a real, and I think maybe part of it is just like the reality of, you know, like kind of where we are in the world and, and what I've certainly learned in COVID and what I've learned in other ways too. Um, you know, I just, I, I felt recently a real pull to kind of be, um, to, to, to center myself more, to do more work within a disability space uh, than I have in the past. And that's not just in terms of my scholarly work, but that's just in terms of my, my political work and kind of what I try to do. And that's coming out of both, you know, um, things that I feel like I've needed to respond to or that I've wanted to, but also just really kind of, you know, being so um, inspired by the work that I've been doing and, 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 and feeling it really necessary and being in communities um, where that kind of work politically, scholarly and others, it's just really feeling it's really feeling like like where I'm, you know, maybe not where I'm going all the way, right? But but certainly where I'm going to keep going, and um, and so yeah, I don't I don't know what I'm going to do after the wrestling thing is done, um, but I would not be surprised at all if it's something that, or if at some point there are things that that again, kind of think more about disability specifically because in my just in my life and my teaching life and my activist life and my life life, <laughs> I certainly feel very um very much recommitted to mm -hmm. trying to work within those spaces yeah yeah what do what what what, what do you think now what what do, do you think the hip-hop industry or the hip-hop culture is open to disability now have you seen any movement toward that or you know do you see that it's you know based in a, a charity kind of platform, which I, I, I think I, I think it, it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I was going to say, I'm mean, to hear your thoughts on that. I mean, you're certainly mm -hmm. uh, an expert in this too, um, far m much more than me. Uh, but uh, I think, you know, I think there are ways in which hip hop and popular music more generally, because I think, you know, as with so many things, often you know the problem it's not like this is a it's not like ableism is just a hip-hop problem right it's it's a it's a much broader musical problem and i think it's very easy for you know people who hate hip-hop and particularly kind of you know <laughs> white folk and powerful folks to just kind of demonize hip-hop as being the problem and then it's yeah. then we can pretend the rest of it doesn't exist but i do think in some ways i think it's gotten better um but i but very limitedly so i don't think that it's you know, we're very, very far from seeing a truly, you know, accessible is too simple a word to use, right? But in the broadest way possible, I think that hip hop, like a lot of American culture is still really beholden to both a kind of conscious and unconscious ableist practice. Two things, two things that I would say though, that I found and that's one of the reasons, by the way, that again, at the end of the book, when I'm talking about like, where do we hear Bushwick Bill now, that Bushwick Bill is gone. Yeah. And that's when I say that Crip Hop Nation is one of the major places we hear the legacy of Bushwick Bill um, and, the, and what Bushwick Bill represented. Um, and I, that's why your, your all's work and your work is so critical. Um, but the two things I would say in kind of mainstream hip hop or sort of, you know, above ground hip hop, yeah. Uh, one of them is that I do think in some ways very limited, I don't want to overstate this and I don't want to overstate Bushwick Bill's place in it, but I think that, you know, 
there's been a bit of a move towards a more kind of body positive kind of attitude where we've seen in certain ways, at least a little bit of an opening for um, what we might not consider kind of normative or normatively beautiful or whatever. Um, and the other way I would say it too, is that I think there's been, you know, I'm, I'm glad to hear some discussion of mental health now and mental illness yeah. in yeah. hip hop and, and, as, and, and not just in a kind of stigmatized or over the top way. And I think that's very directly traced back in part to my mind's playing tricks on me and, yeah. and the ghetto boys work. Um, but I mean, yeah, there's a long way to go. <laughs> and there's, um, you know, and there's just, there's this continued need, I think, to, to push. And I think that, you know, the, the, the presence of spaces that are disruptive and that are counter, counter cultural or to the mainstream or that allow disabled folks to express and, and have a voice and an audience, um, is that's why that's so powerful. Uh, so yeah, no, I think there's a long way to go, but but I think that's true in most most respects. But, but yeah, so you think it's pretty? You think we're still? Yeah, I, I think I think I think the hip hop or hip hop main scene industry is still a gun charity. You know, especially when it comes to this way. You you see it so many so so much. You know, Drake is getting a wheelchair to somebody. You know, right. Charity happening for autism. It's it's it's, it's like all over the place. Totally. You know the, that that kind of thinking just drowns hip hop. Like no other no other music um, genre that, that yep. you know. Absolutely right. So, yeah. You know, one 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 of my dreams. I tell everybody this. I tell everybody to tell you this because you're you're there down south. But one one of my dreams, and when I, I'm going to try to um, mix it into my PhD program so I can get funding to do it, is to is is to I I just love the story of. Josh White Senior, mm. folk singer. His his story is incredible, incredible. Because when he was like eight or eight or nine, he had a job to guide all the blind blues artists all to the south. Mm. So I just they, 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 I just want to go back there and just you know walk through his. Well, through his trails, I know, I know it's not there now, but just try to, you know, capture that history because yeah, he, he led so many people, you know, blind Lemon Jefferson and, and so many blind blues artists, and I think I think that that story is not told or not known as much. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I didn't know. I mean, I don't know a lot about Josh White Sr. in general, but I definitely didn't know that. That's amazing. Isn't it amazing? I, I, I had an opportunity to interview his son, uh -huh. which I treasure that, I treasure that interview. And he talked about it a little, a little bit. He's like, you know, I was young at the time, but yeah. It's just, it's just amazing. And on YouTube, there's there's um Josh White Sr. talking about that time and talking about that there was so many buying blues artists on corners back then, you know, and talking wow. about how he went back home and to ask his mom, could he do this job? Wow. Amazing that the story is amazing. I was like, there, there has to be like a movie about this. Yeah, this is really? Oh, yeah. So, wow. Yeah. Well, I hope, yeah, I, I hope you get to research that more. That sounds just amazing. Yeah, yeah. it totally is. Totally is. And, and I realized that a lot of blues uh, museums down south don't have disabled blues singers in it. It's like, why is that? That's that's so true. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. Is this is this is 
it's it's also amazing that a lot of hip hop scholars in universities don't track this way in in the blues. You know, they they, yeah. they miss that part of the history. And like both genres, hip hop and the blues, started on street in the streets. So it's like you know the the, the history is there, the, the, the connection of disability is there, but nobody has really talked about it. You know, in in a disability kind of platform. You know, so that's so true. That's so true. Um, huh. Yeah, it's interesting. Interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. No. And I it, that it is. You know. I mean. It, it. It's. It's not shocking in the sense that you know we're used to that kind of erasure. Yeah. But it's also. But it's also shocking when you kind of think about the degree to which it could be and should be at the center of of these yeah. stories and and what and what changes right when we put it at the center. So yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Um, so all right, so coming out of this book, you know, yeah, tell to tell the audience where they can buy it, how they can buy it. Um, yeah. I bought it at uh, Barnes and Noble because I, I I try to stay away from Amazon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean you can buy it at any of the any of the kind of normal, normal spots. Um and obviously encourage folks to use, you know, to use non-Amazons, non-Amazon spaces and independent spaces if you can. And, um, but yeah, it's available pretty widely. Um, and, uh, and I would also, yeah, I would definitely encourage people to check out um, the other books in the series um, that are really, it's a really cool series. Um, a lot of different a lot of different kinds of takes on different artists and um what, what, what the other books you know give us like yeah a, there's a few art. there's a few of them there 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 was there are books now on um solange on karen carpenter on the ramones on um trying to think of some of the others of course i'll blank on them but uh but yeah a wide variety of artists and really kind of often like this book a very kind of a mix of a personal and critical take with a, you know, critic in the sense of like, not necessarily bad, just kind of music critic kind of thing with, um, with sort of broader context and, and that kind of stuff written for, you know, written for a, a wide audience. You know, that's another thing about the audience that in the kind of writing I do, but also the writing in the series, you know, um, we wanted to make sure, and I wanted to make sure that this was, you know, a, a, that it wasn't just a bunch of kind of academic talk right that it was written for everybody and that folks could that there would be deep deep thinking in it that you can get a lot out of no matter where you're coming from but people who you know want to read something uh, but might not have that specific kind of academic language don't worry because we i uh, i and we were very conscious of not doing that so so yeah it's available everywhere and uh it's a uh, uh, the ebook also available so um if that's your preferred mode and um and yeah so you, you you mentioned it in the beginning. I want to bring it back up. Not not as a critique, but just 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 as something to talk about. You know how how do you you know think I and mean, how did you come to this book as a white um, you know disabled man? You know, yeah. coming in this in the space of hip hop and you know talking about Bush Lequel. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to be very conscious of my positionality, right, and kind of where I was coming from, um, both in the sense of I wanted to, I wanted to talk about that in relation to my, my kind of personal relationship to Bushwick Bill's music and to why I wanted to write this and to our kind of the things we shared in terms of our physicality, but also the things that are very different. And the fact that, you know, as a white person who is sort of looking, looking up to this black artist, I wanted to talk about that too, right? To like, you know, to make sure I wasn't kind of doing some sort of minstrel show kind of stuff, right? Where I'm, I'm projecting all of my 
desires and fears onto this black person. Um, and I, you know, I don't know, I tried, I hope, I hope I didn't do that, but uh, that's, you know, I wanted to at least be honest with that. And also in terms of writing about hip hop and writing about this story, um, you know, I wanted to tell it as accurately as I could. I don't know, you know, there's probably things I got wrong, but, um, but also center, center, quite frankly, center black voices um, and try to fill the book, not only with Bushwick Bill's uh, words and with Scarface's words and James Prince, the head of rap Records words and those folks, um, but also, you know, of the, of the limited amount of really good writing that I've found on Bushwick Bill, it was all done by particularly young black writers. Um, and so I wanted to make sure that the voices that were centered in this um, were, were black voices uh, specifically. Mm -hmm. And to make it very clear to the reader that this is not a story about white people <laughs> or about one white person in particular. But I mean, it's something that I'm, I was very conscious of and I'm not sure I did it 100% right. Um, and again, I didn't want to try to suggest this was the definitive statement on anything, you know? Um, but it really did strike me that, you know, just because we have a kind of, I think, shared, we have some shared experiences as it relates to ableist oppression, right? Or ableist thinking yeah. and those sorts of issues that it is impossible and it would be incredibly dishonest for me to claim that like we have the same experiences especially because of the intersectional way that race and disability work, right? And race and gender and disability work. So, so yeah, I mean, it was, it was an interesting thing, but I wanted, I, I wanted to be as, you know, truthful as I could with the reader and as honest with, as I could with the reader and to not make myself ever the center of this at all. Yeah. yeah. Because I feel like that's, that's something that white writers do all the time, you know, and like, and it's really annoying and I hate it, but I also, as a white person, I'm, I'm as susceptible to that if I'm not careful as anybody. So, so that was kind of where I was coming from with that. Yeah, good, good, good. One more question, I'll, 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 I'll leave you alone. Um, oh, please, this is such so great, yeah. Do, do, do you see this book being like a textbook in colleges and do you see this book like being a class or like an introduction class to disability and hip hop because that's that, 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 that's where I'm going, you know. Right. Uh, like I said, like yeah. I showed it to my advisor and my advisor was like, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I would love it. I mean, I would be, I, you know, I, I would love for it to be taught. Um, I know it, it's actually being taught right now. Oh, really? Yeah, in one, I, I, it's actually being taught in a in a Texas music history course. I know that. Um, but, uh, but oh, I would love for it to be taught in, particularly in disability spaces and also in hip hop spaces. Yes. Um, I mean, that would be such an honor. And also, you know, um, the great thing about introducing your own work to other scholars, especially new new folks coming in or folks looking for their their particular uh lanes is that you know they get to build off the work and make yeah. it make it better you know like I, I can't wait for you know it's never fun to hear people be like well you got this wrong or this could have been better but on the other hand that's what we do it right and yeah. i would i'm so excited to see where this work might go somebody brought up to me the other day um a question about um uh, it's actually it's sort of similar to the question you ask about his record label um, he had some issues as it related to immigration and he was almost deported at one point. Yeah. And someone asked me if, if, um, if I knew of, you know, whether his disability played into those, um, and I'm sure it did, but I don't know the specifics. So I would love for somebody to go look at that, you know, and think about those things. So, um, so, but I would, I would love for it to be taught and I hope that it leads to, you know, more discussions and more work and, um, and to be to be in conversation with the, with the people who are doing such important important stuff. So yeah, that'd be great. I would love for it to be. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it should be. It should be. I know it, 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 it's in my library, and you know my PhD um, outcome is to have a queer pop institute. 
So we do a takeover of a building in LA and we have the library as a music studio and art, visual art and all that stuff. So I can see this book oh. being in the Crip Hop Library. <laughs> Honestly, and I'm really not just saying this because I'm here talking to you, like that, I could think of no greater honor than to be present in that space. So, um, so that's, that's, yeah, that's really wonderful to hear. And, and what an important, what a, I can't wait to just come visit the Crip Hop Institute, whether or not the book ends up there, like that's such an important project and that's, that's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna happen. It's gonna take a while, it's gonna happen. So, you know, tell people your website. How can people get in contact with you? Yeah. So I'm the probably, so, you know, I'm, you can find me in a couple places, probably the best. I don't, I'm sorry. I've never, I've never done the thing of like getting a like good professional website together. I'm kind of deficient in that, but, uh, but you can find me on Twitter. Um, I am pretty active on Twitter and my handle is, it's just my name, Charles L. Hughes. And then the number two, um, find me there. I'm on Instagram. I don't do a ton of stuff there, but um, Twitter is actually probably the best way to get a hold of me. Yeah, um, and uh, and yeah, I you know I would I would love to I would love to talk more with folks if anybody you know reads the book and loves it or has questions or has criticisms or anything like that. Um, and then they can tell me kind of what they're up to and teach me something. Great, great. Well, thank you so much, Charles. This, is, this has been excellent. I, I can't wait to get into the book. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this for my holiday re reading. And my classes is over, but it's going to be the first book I get into. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Okay, well, you, you have a good, good day. Hey, you as well. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye.